my whip came back in black Starting saying rest in peace to fun side you want to get in life or like where you are currently 
and what makes you happy. And usually if you can find the things that make you really happy and the things you're passionate about, the motivation will come. Obviously, if you're not enjoying the things you're doing, it's going to be hard to be motivated and yeah. do those things. Yeah, you have to really, really like the other thing yeah. in the morning and be excited about whatever exactly. you're doing. And um, if you're like fueled by like your passion and drive for it, that's yeah. how you stay motivated. If you don't like it, then you're not going to lose hard. like your consistency. Exactly. And then it's forced and it, you so, can't force it. It yeah. needs to just come. For sure. Um, best hit to burn fat, trying to get rid of the middle trunk so stubborn. Um, I really like doing like Stairmaster hit. Yeah. It's like killer. Like I'll do like 20 seconds all out running on the Stairmaster and then, you know, two minutes of resting. Yeah. And, and you can do circuits, like if you look on YouTube or online, there's like so many different circuits that you can do to burn fat. Basically, you got to just really keep the intensity up, get your heart rate really up, and then allow yourself to let it cool down, like recover, get your heart rate back down to a normal level, and then get right back up. Again. Yeah, if you're constantly in like that high like intensity state and don't bring your heart rate down, you're not, it's not considered. Yeah. So you definitely need to like rest. And I feel like yeah. a lot of people like when they're doing cardio, they want to like keep it high. No, you need to And they need to like yeah. fluctuate through it. Because if you want to get it to a really high point, you need to allow yourself to have the rest yeah. to get it back up. For sure. And I, I like, for me too, when I do, if I'm not doing the sprints on the Stairmaster, I like to hit sprints yes. on the treadmill, like an incline. Those are killer. And um, yeah, so I'll do that or the Stairmaster. Yeah, actually. sprints are really good too, yeah. Yeah. How many times a week? Do you train? Um, right now I'm training, I'd say like three times a week, but I just started my new program today and now I'll be training five times a week. Yeah, I train five times a week and uh, I started my cut, so five times a week will be the thing and uh, cardio right now like one or two times a week. Yeah. And I try really hard to just do more like cardio outside, like going for a hike or go for a walk as opposed to like machines. Yeah, especially in California. Yeah. I mean, like if you're not going outside for cardio, like you're not making good use of the weather. So yeah, there's really no excuses here. No. <laughs> Best workout leggings? Ah, oh, I don't stand here. <laughs> there's so many. And she also works with I like, I like my dude even ones, obviously. Yeah. Um, what else do I wear? I like... I like Lululemon. I like Lululemon. I really like Lululemon. But like they're not always super affordable, so if not, I will go yes, to like like Marshalls or Ross and like get off brand. I don't know what they are. Actually. You know what had really good leggings for really really affordable prices was Aerie. Oh yeah, I've heard Aerie had really like good. they're like Lululemon quality, but they're like one third the price. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think like you should be spending like, no. Time. I mean, if you got it, I guess. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, because we wear them so often, and sometimes like twice a day. And just like it, I have endless amounts. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Favorite on the goal meals? Maybe on the go meals. On the go. Oh, I, I like cereal. <laughs> yeah, cereal. Cereals look like super easy. So I for cereal, there's like so many different ways to do it. I usually do like the whole wheat, like plain Cheerios. Like I'll fill my bowl and then I'll add like granola with like raisin on top, and then I'll mix in cashew or almond milk, depending what I have, and a scoop of protein powder, and it's like. It's a pretty filling meal. Like it yeah. actually like keeps you full, and it's like super quick. Yeah, there's like no way. cooking. It's like very little preparation. So that's probably one of my favorite. Um, or like grabbing like a, a protein bar. Yeah, protein bars are always like a pretty much a go-to. If not, I like to heat up like oatmeal and egg whites in the microwave yeah, and mix good. them together, mm -hmm. and then just put like almond butter in there. That's really good. Um, if I need to like do something on the go, because the microwave is, is like the best. If you need it. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely say it. And otherwise, I really do like to make my meals like meal for meal. Yeah. I don't like to, if I meal prep, it'll just be like protein. Yeah. But the chicken, like you'll yeah. chicken in bulk. Yeah. yeah, but other than that, I do like eating like fresh meals. So do I. And, I. and I find like right now, especially like I always want something different every day. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like makes it a little bit more like exciting if you can. But obviously if your times, like if you have a very like strict time schedule, then I would obviously prep in advance so that you can make sure that you have your meals readily available. Yeah. So sure. It kind of depends on where you are, what your situation is, whatnot. Yeah. How does your workout diet change from contest prep compared to your standard everyday workout right now? For me, it's like super different. Um, I'm very strict in my contest prep, so I'm training six days a week weight training and then I'll do a one day of like circuits and I'll be doing cardio 
at the start, usually just once a day for 20 minutes and it'll be fasted. And then towards the end, I'm doing 20 minutes of fasted every morning and then I'm doing 20 minutes of hit like on the Stairmaster every single day. So a good pre and after cardio. And then obviously my diet is completely different. I'm prepping all my meals. I'm following a very strict and regimented diet and I don't, I don't go like I follow my meal plan and that's it. And it's the calories slightly decrease in a calorie deficit as I go through my prep. Yeah, yeah. For me, I mean, I would say pretty much like along yes. the same lines of my contest prep diet. Um, so I would like we need down calories at, like each yeah. week and lots of cardio and you're just very, very strict and yeah. you're watching like everything that you're eating, your yeah. sodium levels, your water intake is very on point. Yeah. And then in, like off season, um, I would say like more um, flexible and more intuitive. Yeah, more intuitive. I'd say like I don't follow a meal plan at all right now or I don't diet at all. I just eat how I want to and how it makes my body feel. So I found like the kind of food that really like sits well with my stomach, my digestion and gives me yeah. good energy levels and I usually stick to those foods. But then I obviously, if I want something, I'll, I'll have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean it's, it's about having like more balance as opposed to when you're on conscious prep. There's not much balance because you're on a very strict diet. Yeah, and you have to love yourself in both. both exactly. Foods, both skin. What are your favorite cheat meals? Burger and fries. Oh, Specifically, the peanut butter banana bacon burger. From where? Okay, yeah, in London, where we're from. London, Ontario, not England. Everyone asks me that. <laughs> um, they have, it's called the hunka hunka, and it's like peanut butter, banana, bacon, all in a burger. But here, in um, Venice, they have 26 each. I heard it's an OMG burger. Really like it. It's like caramelized bananas, jam, peanut butter, bacon, all in a burger. It's um, do you like sweet potato fries? Are you, are you um, I like <clears throat> sweets, but I like it almost. Oh, see, I'm too. But I, I like both. Sometimes I'll just get both. What do you find works for you to lean up? Um, diet changes. Like honestly, if I'm feeling like I need to lean up, which I don't care to lean up anytime soon, but I'll just quickly adjust my diet a little bit, and I yeah. find I can lean up pretty you, quickly. Yeah, you can see once you clean your diet, you can lose like probably like eight to eight, seven to eight pounds of weight in a week, just yeah. because you, you lose like tons of water. water. Weight. You don't realize like how much water you're holding when your diet isn't pretty like like filled with like more whole foods. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, just really like thinking of your diet and knowing your intake is gonna make a huge Like difference. I would always recommend working on your diet first and then implementing with cardio and proper, and obviously yeah. you training, but diet's like the key. Yeah, I think cardio is like the last thing you work in. Yeah, um, exactly. That should always be like supplemented in as needed. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Yeah, so you can't like outwork a bit of diet, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what are your thoughts on water manipulation? Um, it, I guess it depends. Like if you're, if it's for a contest prep, then a lot of the people, most people will do water manipulation just to dry out. But everyday like living, you should be manipulating your water. You should keep your water really consistent and obviously consuming a lot. Yeah, yeah. I would say just a gallon a day, and then well, I don't do too much water manipulation. No, no, you don't need to unless yeah. I mean I, it's very different if you're like on peak week and you're about to do a show. Then obviously water manipulation is going to happen with sodium and everything. But in terms of every day, you should you should try to keep it as consistent as yeah, possible. Consistent. That's when you'll get the best results is if you keep things consistent. Yeah, and like and they always say that sodium is bad, but it's not bad if you consistently eat the same thing yeah, every day. Yeah, exactly. Like, and, and, and your body needs salt. salt. Like you need to yeah. eat salt. Cool. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. What's one tip for uh, to lose weight if you don't want to fall on macros or anything? Um, so you need to figure out kind of like where your calories are at. So let's say you are a certain amount of weight. So you don't want to count anything. But you don't have to. Just get just an estimate, okay? Just an estimate of where your food's roughly at mm -hmm. and then kind of keeping it in that range or a little bit less. Yeah, I mean if you really want to lose weight, you have to like sort of want to at least know something about what you're eating. I'm talking like don't eat, don't eat after six. Or no, don't do any of that stuff. Nothing. No, that's, no. A, that's, a, that's a lot. I mean that's yeah. like a, a myth. Basically, it's like how many calories you're consuming within that day and how much you're burning. So, doesn't like, matter what time it is? Or... No, like if you're in a calorie deficit of any sort, you're going to lose weight. It doesn't need to be eating after a certain time frame or how much carbs or whatever it is. It's really just how much you're burning, how much your body's using, and how much you're consuming. And if there's a deficit, you're going to lose weight. Huh. Yeah. It's, it's calories. I heard that if, you eat, that'd be like, if you don't eat right before bed, it's better. Not sure. I eat cereal right before I bed. I used to eat my cereal, <laughs> even in contest prep, right before bed. Yeah. Because I needed, I don't like to sleep and, and my stomach growl. Yeah, exactly. I can't do that. Because, like, sleep's important. If, you, if you're, like, starving and you don't sleep all night long, that's going to prevent you from losing weight. 
sleep's very crucial and, and wanting to sleep. So sleep's important. It's yes, very sleep. important. I've had clients um, like drop weight, like two pounds or something, just because they got enough sleep. Like, so like being less stressed. Is that yeah, like being less stressed. Your cortisol yeah. is stable. When you're not getting enough sleep, your cortisol so levels are... Tell them when they scroll on Instagram, you can get more stress. <clears throat> yeah. I'm looking at people like you guys. You gotta at me. You really don't spend too much time. Use it as, as motivation. Use it as inspiration. Don't use it to compare us to anybody. How do you have self control when it comes to good like good food? Like um, food? I find like since I'm in a really good place of balance of food that I can eat things and I don't feel the need to like overdo it. But when I didn't have balance and I was restricting myself or was on a strict diet, then when I would like have something that like was whatever you want to call it that kind of food. I would like overindulge because I felt like I couldn't like I had no like sense of control. Yeah. But since I'm in a place where I'm very like balanced with my food and I don't restrict myself, I don't label food as like really bad and I just look I just eat kind of like listening to my body. When I eat something that's like that, I don't feel the need to like overindulge. It's like I know I can have it the next day. Whereas when I was on a diet or restricting myself, it was like I was like, Okay, I'm gonna have this today and that's it. So I would like binge on it, you know yeah. what I mean? For me, I actually made the shift like for like having like to want to binge and stuff when I switched to macronutrients and was tracking my food yeah. because I knew that like if I was dealing with a craving or if I was dealing with something that I needed to like satisfy, I just worked it into my food that day and I looked forward to like my refeeds and I was like, I know I'm going to have that day, like I can be consistent and that really changed my whole outlook on food. I realized that there is no like bad foods. And um, I needed to make sure that that can that can be like same was really yeah. switching to macronutrients and knowing like I could always fit something in. Um, yeah. What are your goals with your body? Aesthetic, strength, size, health. Uh, right now, health, um, <clears throat> physical and mental. I want to improve my cardio a bit and get more into like being really like athletic. Yeah. Um, but based on just being able to get in the gym and do a really good workout, not um, based on like the way I look. And just how I feel energy wise, like after work, you know, when you feel really good, you get that like endorphin release, and then obviously how that translates into how I feel mentally, because yeah. that's why I, I want to just enjoy working out for the health benefits of it all. Yeah, for sure. No, yeah, for me, it's not aesthetics anymore, it's really health. Like, I've dealt with a lot of health issues um, in the past few months, so really just putting my health first and keeping like a good weight and. Um, just training for strength and feeling strong and going to the gym. In the beginning, I would say in the beginning of my fitness journey, all I cared about was getting abs, and that's yeah. not everything. No. Like, doesn't make you feel fulfilled. It's, it's, looking, it's feeling good. It's yeah. not just looking a certain way. How many complete rest days per week is best? It really depends on the person, on how hard you're training, on how much you're eating, how much you're sleeping, your stress. Like, yeah. there's so many variables, but yeah. I mean, most people will take one to two rest days a week. I think that's like, but again, if you need more, it really depends on, again, listening to your body. If you're not making improvements or your strength starts going down or you're not eating enough, then you're gonna need to take more rest. Yeah, for sure. Favorite pre post workout meals? Um, pre. <clears throat> Yeah, like I really, it depends. Like some days I do stir fries, some days I'll do cereal, yeah. some days I'll do, you know, like fruit and like a protein bar. Um, you you want to really feel what makes you feel more energized. Like for me, I used to I used to avoid like really heavy meals before my workout because yeah, I felt I like I would feel like sluggish and then it would be hard for me to like get through my workout. So foods that's going to give you a good amount of energy and also going to make you feel kind of light so you're not going to be feeling kind of like weighed down in the gym. I prefer like slower digesting carbs before my workout just because like it gives me energy throughout my yeah, workout. Yeah, instead of like a crash. Yeah, like a sweet yeah. potato or oatmeal like before. Yeah. And then after I eat like more fast digesting carbs like rice cakes or a protein cake with cereal. Yeah. Something like that um, makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. That's what I usually do. How do you guys work out as How do you guys work out as a couple to satisfy his bulking and your slim figure? Um, <clears throat> Regan and I are really different in terms of our training. <clears throat> we don't, like, he's training to be a professional bodybuilder and I'm training for wellness and health. So, I mean, he does his thing, I do my thing. We train at different times a lot of time because I film his workouts. So, I mean, our workouts are, like, not even the same at all. And then he eats what he eats and it, like, it doesn't bother me and I just eat what I, what I eat kind of thing. It, it's, it's never been, like, a problem, really. I don't know if you find like it like for him he 
I'm, I feel very like balanced with foods. When he eats different things, I do, it doesn't bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. I think when, I, when we first were dating and he would eat like stuff like that, I would try to keep up and then I realized like I can't eat that much food because my body doesn't need that much food. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. 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 We, we <laughs> eat the same thing and then we train the same thing. Yeah, but, but, but then you realize, like, I used to be like that with Regan, and I was like, hey, like, he's like a 250 pound dude. Like, yeah. I can't eat, I can't keep up to eating like I this. I eat what she eats. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, at night time, at night time, I eat what you eat. I eat what you eat, and during what the day, you eat what I eat. Oh, I don't I even go there. <laughs> don't even go there. Let's go. I mean, how many, <laughs> how many cheat meals do you have? I don't track it anymore. I'm, I'm not on like a strict schedule. When I was, I would do one a week. Now it's kind of, I just listen to my body and if I feel like it, I just have one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Whenever, I guess when we go out with friends, I don't know. But sometimes and I don't that. consider it, like, I won't, I don't label it as like a cheat meal anymore. I've kind of gotten away from that just because I found when I would label it as a cheat meal, it would be like, I would like obsess over it. I'd get like anxiety over it and I would, it would get to the point that I would like lose control and I would end up binging. So just not thinking of it in terms of like a cheat meal has allowed me to just not look at food like that. Yeah. And allowed me to just, if I go out and I want to eat something, I'll eat it. And it's not like, oh, okay, this is my cheat meal. Now I need to eat this, 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 this. i got to get a chocolate bar in because I'm not going to eat like this again. Oh, yeah. That, that's like a vicious cycle. Yeah. And I've been in that cycle before. Exactly. But, uh, yeah. Just like having it when like. When the, you feel like it's happening. And days that like you don't, like you eat differently, like don't beat yourself up about it. The biggest thing is like not having stress over things. So like yeah. if I eat something that's like maybe I shouldn't have ate it, I don't stress about it anymore and then it's like it doesn't do anything to you. Yeah. It's when you constantly stress about it and like have a breakdown about it and you're like obsessing over it, then it's going to cause more damage than anything. Yeah, I agree. So like don't get candy at the Do you want to do like three more questions? Sure. Because we have, we have a lot of videos going on today, so this is not the only thing. How do you determine the correct amount of water to take in each day? Um, I see about that. Yeah, like, I mean, it's very, again, it's individual. Like, how much are you sweating during the day? Um, yeah. how, it's like some people, how much sodium are you consuming? If you're consuming more sodium, you're going to need to drink more water. If you're having workouts where you're sweating out a lot of water, you're going to need to drink more water. But yeah, like, a gallon's like your standard. Um, I guess you can always do the pee test. Yeah. <laughs> if your yeah. pee's clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can if it's not then you know you're like you need to be consuming more water. Yeah. Okay. Uh <clears throat> this person said I'm losing a pound a week, I've lost seven pounds in seven weeks. My goal is to get lean. My high carb day I eat sushi and in and out. If I want to get super lean, would this hinder my progress? It really depends on what kind of a carb cycling approach you're doing. So if you're doing a very low carb cycle approach that you're depleting your glycogen very low and then you're having a refeed like that, it's it's actually gonna be beneficial for you to get your leptin levels up, your metabolism revving, yeah. all your hormones back up. But if you are, let's say your carb your low carbs aren't very low and then you do a high day like that, it's probably not as beneficial. But the fact that you're losing a pound a week is very, is actually good because... Yeah, if you've been doing that for seven yeah, weeks... Yeah, like that's, really that's, a, that's a, a, like a nice um, speed to be losing weight at because it's not like aggressive. So you're going to be able to like keep your body like as healthy as possible while losing weight. Yeah. It'll just take you a little bit longer. But again, you'd have to like really evaluate like where your carbs are, how depleted you're getting, and then how much you really need to restock your glycogen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I always uh, listen to your coach. Like, yeah. It's like he's gonna know your body. Like, yeah. We we don't really know your body that well. Um, so just yeah, as long as like your progress continues mm -hmm. to stay that way. Do you weigh yourself every day? Mm -mm, never. <laughs> I used to. That's like a mind game. That was like when I was like very obsessed with my weight and my appearance and that I would be like on the scale like every day and like if my weight went up I would be like freaking out. But now I'm at a point that like I don't I don't weigh myself, I don't look at myself as like a number anymore, and it's a lot healthier. I mean, obviously, if you're, if you're even in contest prep or whatever you're dieting. But nobody cares about how, the weight you are on stage. Like, nobody no. looks at girl and say she is 110 or she's 115. No, but I think like just if you need to weigh yourself to monitor for your coach, once a week's fine. Yeah, once like, a week. Once a day is aggressive. Like, you're not, your body changes a lot. Like, especially if you're a woman, some some days you're going to be holding more water. Your hormones are different depending on the time of the month. Like, so if you're constantly, or how much you ate that day, or sodium, or water, or stress, or anything, it's going to fluctuate your weight. So I would suggest not doing the weight. Yeah. Progress photos. Progress photos are, like, the yeah. best way to do I, it. I just take photos every day. Just every day. 
Because if Miss Scale would make me upset, I would be like frustrated and, and nervous. I mean, then you'll see, like, you'll look at pictures and be like, wow, I look great. And then you'll go on the skin and be like, oh my goodness, I'm up two pounds. And then that could, like, really, like, affect you mentally. Whereas yeah. if you just focus on how you're looking and how you're feeling, and more importantly, you're going to feel a lot better and you're not going to, like, get in that mind gain of numbers. And Yeah. She'd go on the skin and just say, like, you look great. Alright, we'll do one more question. Um. I got, I got a good one. Okay. To leave it off, it's not a good one. We can do yours after that. It will be the bonus question. It's a good question. All right. It probably got better ones. Though. The last one's a Pick a good one, Sam. There, this is the only one. <laughs> why, why would I eat a salad over a fresh hot pepper and pizza? Uh, it's a good question. Well, well how did it make you? There's another question. You do not have to. You don't have to, you you don't have to really, really preference. Like, yeah. yeah, if you want to eat pepper and pizza, you eat pepper and pizza. That's your, I mean, you can, nobody can tell you what to do. You gotta just, it, it is your life. Yeah, <laughs> we can't say. Why there's been a couple of questions too about like the types of music you guys listen to when you work out. Alright, we'll take one of them. It's different. That was a question, like, what type of oh. <laughs> Chad. Chad just like... Honestly, I don't even wear headphones when I work out Me anymore. Either. Because all the gyms just have, like, music in the background. Yeah. Like, the gym back home, Regan's gym, has music, so I don't need headphones. And then Gold's has music, so I'm yeah. like... And there's always, like, so much going on, I'm just like... I know. You know, like, you don't really need music. I know, and I'm so... Easy time with the Q and A, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't, I never wear headphones, and I'm always just like focused, like uh, through what I'm, whatever I'm doing, listening to music or throughout the gym, and um, yeah, I don't even think about it. All right, I like to listen when I'm on the stairmaster though, or something like yeah. a podcast. I yeah, yeah, to, like, or I watch to, like a YouTube, YouTube video, yeah, yeah, something like that. So yeah, actually, you know what you can do when you're on cardio is like listen to an audiobook. Yeah, I really love is. listening to audiobooks, but like, yeah. not everyone likes that. Regan makes fun of me, so. No, you should. I mean, it's, it's a chance for you to really like, take your time and like, relax. And, and then you that. get to learn while you're in cardio. Bonus yeah, to make good stuff. use of it. Alright, well, thank you guys Wait, so much. We're getting the bonus question. Oh, bonus question. Bonus question. Yo, this is a real question. So, people are watching right now? How many people are on there, Sam? 91. 91 people? Okay. So, 91 people can't like lose weight right now? Like, right now, right now? Right? So it's like you have mental health and like physical health, right? Is that what is that right? Physical yeah. health? What's more important and what could somebody do right now to feel better? I mean it really I mean I'd say mental health is more important than anything because if you're not mentally in a good place, the physical health you're it's gonna have an impact on your on your body, yeah. on your hormones, on your stress, on everything. So you need to really get into a good place mentally first and then you can focus on your physical. What's a, how do you do that? It depends on what you're going through. It's, it's very hard to like, I mean, if you are struggling with depression or anxiety, obviously, go and speak, if you need to speak to someone, go and see a therapist or see a professional, a medical professional. But it, like, it really depends on... Or like on, a friend or something. Yeah, and or I would say, yeah. picture, like, you feel a certain way now, and like, I learned from you, like, picture how you want to feel and realize that you can get to that point and like develop a plan in your head and believe that you can you have to like truly like want that and just picture yourself feeling a certain way and looking a certain way and moving more towards that yeah and um, you used to you had an eight pack right yeah but then you never were happy no i was very no. miserable because i was i was that so the, appearance, so the, yeah. appearance does not mean equate happiness and i always thought aesthetics equated happiness and it doesn't it's how you feel inside it's how your relationships are um, it's it's more than how you look. So it's like and, an illusion. Yeah, yeah. And but do you find it's good like, to have goals? Good to have oh, goals of course. to get there for sure. And um, it realizes that that's not never an end goal. There's, there's never an end goal. So no. like don't link your happiness to. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no. Trust me, I've done that. It's, yeah. It's very very unfulfilling, very empty. So what should you what, what should you attach your happiness to? How you feel mentally yeah, like and what makes that. you happy, not just. Internally, as opposed to an external so image. Like the process yes. more than the result. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, the process. Exactly. Going through the process, and seeing myself change, being able to be consistent through that. Like, that's something to seriously be proud of. And don't just be proud of like how your body's changed. You'd be proud of like, wow, you feel better. You have more energy now because you're eating healthier. Oh, you feel great because you're doing cardio and you can go up 10, 10 flights of stairs now without being out of breath. Or yeah. Your sleep's improved, or you know, like things that are more health related and how you're feeling mentally as opposed to just 
looking a certain way and and only basing your progress on that it's very yeah it's very um small-minded or even going through what you're going through like what you're saying and only focusing on the end and not enjoying what exactly you, you want to enjoy so, the process or yeah. else what's the point of doing it yeah and that was the biggest thing even when you could die before the result and then you die unhappy well, well, that's that's right. Yeah, but, but it happens. Huh? No, I, I think it's it's important to always be happy now, and I'm learning more. In my and to myself. always be proud of who you are as a person, yeah. and be happy with who you are as a person at each stage. And don't think that like, okay, if I get here, I'm finally gonna be happy because you'll get there. And unless you've worked on where you are now and not and dealing how to be happy now, when you get there, you won't be happy. You'll set a new goal. Yeah, you'll just you'll you'll be there, and you won't even acknowledge that you're there. You'll just be like, okay, now I need to get there. You never right. you because you've never taken the time to really be happy about who you are. Every time you get to a new goal, you'll just be focused on the next thing, and n and none of those new goals. Will yeah, you any, yeah. Any happy, like, that, so. It's a very vicious cycle. Yeah. So don't get yourself. So like to slow down. Like yeah. Cool. All right. That's a wrap for the questions. Thank you guys so much Thank for you. asking the questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe. Subscribe to Victoria and I. Um, we both put out some informational fitness videos and mental health videos, lots of different uh, yeah. array of things. So make sure you subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. I'm like, hold up, who's watching? She just wanna party out of town I'm like, hold up, who's watching, yeah